If you want to see more videos and interviews like this from influential people in tech, finance, and sports, subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell to be alerted. And go a step further and join the YouTube and membership area for early releases of videos like this. I'm out of here. Ha! It's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another kick in this session. Today, I've got my man Joey Lingenbrunner. I've tried to say that about eight times now <laughs> to get it right. Hopefully, I did it. He is a gentleman, actually, I met because one of our employees actually works for our subsidiary called Facings, uh, and it's his wife, so uh, KPL. So, thanks for. Uh, joining me today and it was great meeting you in detroit when you guys came up a few weeks ago a couple weeks ago so how are things right on. going on uh down there you're in florida right 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 so enjoying on um, the sunny a uh, time here um in florida it's always um, a pleasure but you know it was always uh you know it, it was a pleasure to see you guys up you know in detroit that was kind of like my first time exploring the city and you guys got a cool thing going on there for sure yeah, how did you how did you like Detroit? You know the the misconceptions that it's just this ghetto that's running around bullets flying everywhere. <laughs> they do. You weren't in that part of the city. Let me just say. <laughs> you were in the gentrified, you know, newer area of the city. But how did which you was like very it? nice. It was very nice. It was very yeah, nice. Yeah, it was very it? nice. I uh, uh, you know. I did have, um, you know, like kind of like a false idea about Detroit. I knew that Detroit was getting like a lot better, you know, um, you know, over the past decade or so. So, you know, I will admit I, I was a bit surprised and, mm -hmm. you know, like I liked the vibe, you know, like hanging out with you guys mm -hmm. and, you know, meeting everyone, you know, like it, you know, like it kind of felt homey and, you know, I'm originally from um, Ohio, you know, That's so kind right. of like my be a little bit, you know, of home, <laughs> you know, for better or for worse. Um, yeah. You know, but, you know, it felt homey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what a lot of people, I had Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert come up to visit Detroit a few years ago, and they said the same thing. They were shocked, pleasantly surprised, which is good. That's always a good thing. I have Joey on today, guys, again, because I met him when he came up. We're talking, I'm like, oh, and he tells me he's with Lieberland. I'm like, oh, wow, like, I love that concept. I love what that what's going on with that. I haven't been following it as as much lately, in the last couple of years, and he tells me that he's actually working with that organization. Country, explain what Liberland is to the individuals. I'm sure most <laughs> of my subscribers know about Liberland, but let us know what it is, where it is, and how you're involved in this movement. Yeah, sure. So um, I'll do a quick. Um introduction of myself and then i kind of tell um, a little bit about the history and what we're doing so you know i got, hope not to, to go for like a few minute rant here so you know oh, like bear good. with me <laughs> so anyways um my name um, is joey langerbrunner um i work for the government of the free republic of lieberland what is the free republic of lieberland and how did we get here so like let me go a little bit you, you know into you know where we got here so um back in 2015 okay there was this Czech politician, his name was Vít Jedlíka. I'm probably going to like butcher um, his last name because it's Czech, you know, and I'm here, you know, as an American. But anyways, um, he was looking for unclaimed land and he found unclaimed land, uh, you know, out of all places, um, off of like Wikipedia. So he traveled down south um, and the territory is right in between Serbia and Croatia. Um, if you don't know where Serbia and Croatia is, it's in the Balkans, so it's kind of like southeast um you know part of europe and so if you know where the danube river is so it's just like a little piece of unclaimed land um you know we can talk about why it's unclaimed you know like later on um you know but essentially he claimed it um you know back in 2015 on april 13th which is april 13th is thomas jefferson's birthday and you know and so from 2015 on for now so like the country's been existing for about six years now as we've been kind of like working towards recognition working towards like diplomatic efforts and stuff like that um you know and we're basically fully funded you know by like these bitcoiners and stuff like that and we're spreading our whole governance system uh you, you know like using like blockchain technology you know which we can go into later that's kind of like a quick overview, uh, you know, of all this. And it's crazy and it sounds exciting because when you're trying to start um, a new country, it's, 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 it's not too different than trying to start, you know, like a new company, you know, um, you know, when you guys decided to start 
I'm like EOS Detroit. And, you know, of course you guys are starting like face things. It's very similar, the type of challenges, you know, that we're facing, you know, and I would say it's a little bit more complicated, you know, cause we're trying yeah, to I would think deal so. with, yeah, <laughs> right, right, bit. right. Just a but, little bit. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's, it's very similar, you know, we're trying to build a product, you know, at the end of the day, right. um, you know, sure, we have supporters, we have like, visionaries, you know, we have, I'm like, Lieberland, like nationalists, you know, they're all about Lieberland, you know, I was just like, you know, here in the States, everyone's like, America, America, you know, so like, you can call myself um, a Lieberlandian, you know, and I'm very proud, uh, you know, of my nationality, uh, you right. know, so I'm a dual citizen of the U.S. and of Lieberland, but, you know, trying to get like the Lieberland, like recognized on the international you know, sphere is a very complicated, very um, strategic, uh, requires a lot of like diplomatic um, patience um, and strategy. So this is all stuff that we're kind of figuring out, but you know, we got um, a huge team and we got um, a lot of fans and we got a lot of people that have been pushing this. Out of my uh, ignorance, I literally, you know, I just forgot about Lieberland. Like I remember a lot of hype around it when it first started because i remember 2015 right when that whole thing was going on and you know, it was all over the news yeah it was, it was on bbc was... al jazeera like rt yeah 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 it and everywhere. it was it was all in the crypto community as well you know i remember that and it was it was really cool and then jeff burick you know he was really pumping it and talking about it and all of that so then all of, like out of my ignorance i, I didn't continue to follow it so when you said you working with Lieberland, i'm like oh i thought that thing like disappeared or right it's rolled back into croatia or you know <laughs> serbia i don't know what the hell was going on so right my question to you joey is like when i think of a new country being formed i think of how do you protect the country how do you solidify yourself sure. in a, as a country it's through military right <laughs> and i'm like how how is Lieberland going to survive between you know serbia and croatia and what if one of them wants to take the land back because i know it was kind of just thrown away or discarded because no one they couldn't figure out who owned it or you know had access to it ownership to it how how do you feel about that are you guys is that one of your concerns as you guys start to grow? Are you looking to get a military force uh, together? Tell us kind of that that side of things. Okay. Okay. So before I answer um, your question, if we are going to have um, a military, um, let me go back and kind of set up, you know, why this land was, you know, mm -hmm. unclaimed to begin with. Because sure. you know, people are asking, you know, like, you know, how can there just be like a land that is unclaimed, you know, like in this earth, uh, you know, which is pretty bizarre other yeah. than me, you know, maybe it's some parts of, you know, like Antarctica or something like that. Right. Inhabitable um, areas where <laughs> no one can right. even live. Yeah. But right, right, right. So um, essentially, historically, the border between Croatia and Serbia has always been the Danube River. Right. So as you know, um, rivers can change flow over time, correct? So essentially what happened is that the Danube River, um, if you can kind of see, um, you know, on the map there, you know, where the blue goes. And actually, if you can zoom up on that map a little bit, if you can. Um, yeah, no, that's probably fine. So essentially, um, the flow of the Danube River, um, you know, it changed course, um, over a period of time due to some engineering projects to make the flow, um, you know, like a little bit easier for, you know, like, like, let's say like bigger boats, you know, mm -hmm. to trade and stuff like that. And so is so if you know anything about like, let's say, I'm like Yugoslavia, so Yugoslavia mm -hmm. was a country that fell um, in 1991. Right. I'm like roughly so, you know, before that, um, the Communist Republic of Yugoslavia encountered um, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, um, um, and also, I think, like North Macedonia as well. And so it encompassed like this huge 
area. So, you know, essentially when you're talking about the border between Croatia and Serbia, you know, and the river changing, well, it didn't matter anymore because it was just one big country of Yugoslavia. So when you got, so, so when Yugoslavia fell and, you know, those are pretty like violent war, uh, you know, like the U S got involved, you know, like the U S even bombed like Belgrade and, you know, there was like genocide and it was a tough mess. It was about 30 years ago now, so it's, you know, somewhat healed, um, you know, but, you know, like they fought over every square inch of land. And so when you're trying to decide where the hell the border is between Serbia and Croatia now, um, you know, so when it was Yugoslavia, the, and the Danube River changed and actually essentially gave a little bit more land to Serbia. All right. Gotcha. So Croatia is saying, well, the border used to be over here. All right. And Serbia is like, well, you know, well, you know, our board has always been on the Danube River and it's now here. And so that made into a situation where um, you have land that is on the east side of the Danube that they both claim. OK. Mm. And then the land that is on kind of like the Croatian side on the western bank of the Danube, they none of them claim. OK. And so basically, I'm um, like, long story short, um, if they would claim the land that is on the west side of the bank, on the Croatian side of the bank, then they would lose claim to a larger piece of land that is on the eastern, on the Serbian bank of the Danube. Kind of complicated. There's really not much, you know, there when it comes to resources. So it's more of like national pride and, and politics and stuff like that. And it's like, well, if you haven't claimed this land since, you know, like 1991 and it's now 2015, we'll take it. Gotcha. So, so like, let me answer your question when it comes to, let's say, how do we defend the land? You know, we have a military. So um, if you go to liberland.org, which are there now, we have a draft of our constitution. If you read through that constitution, it says that Liberland would not have a standing military. Mm. Okay. So to answer the question and, you know, you know, and you're thinking to yourself like, Oh, you know, you know, you need to defend yourself. But I mean, like Croatia is part of NATO, you know, first of all. And also like Serbia um, is pretty like heavily allied. I'm um, like with Russia, you know, so you're like, you're kind of like right in the middle of kind of um, a contentious area, um, you know, which I can talk about, you know, on the, on the benefits of Liberland being kind of, you know, kind of like in a area where it's like, you know, you have like opposing sides, but there's really no reason for us to have a military in the first place. You know, if you're thinking about Europe, it's a pretty peaceful continent. You really don't have any crazy things going on. You know, you might have some crazy things going on, you know, um, in Eastern like Ukraine, you know, close to like the Russian border, but that's about it. Okay. You know, it's a pretty peaceful area, you know, with Yugoslavia falling about 30 years ago and how much pain, you know, people suffered. I don't think anyone's like looking to fight over, um, you know, like a small piece of land. It, it, you know, it's like, let's be realistic here. Like, this is you know, like, they're not looking for a fight. And so most likely what we'll do is that we'll probably make a deal with maybe like Croatia or Serbia or some other government essentially pay the money to like protect them. And this isn't gotcha. anything any new. So if you no. think about, I'm like Liechtenstein, they essentially pay, um, you know, Switzerland to protect them. If you think of Monaco, they basically you know like have like grants to protect right. them yeah. if you're thinking of like san marino or like vatican city mm -hmm. which are you know two other you know small nations you know they're inside of italy you know they basically have some sort of deal with italy to protect them and so this is nothing i didn't new. think about that yeah right yeah, right so that, there are many right. countries that do that right mm -hmm. and also you know we don't want to come off as like some like violent threat or you know or anything like that you know if we're speaking in the idea of you know you know like we're both like in the crypto industry here you know we're trying to do like a peaceful you know like revolution in a way and so we want to encompass that gotcha. so sorry that's like a like a long answer to that but i just wanted to bring the details of yeah. how the land can be what you know like what are the politics you know in that area you know like especially what happened 30 years ago you know and all this kind of stuff because it fits in and it's just like we don't want to be a threat and if we do try to have like a military you know First of all, it's not good PR. It's not in the vision, um, you know, um, of like Bitcoin um, and blockchain. You know, we want to be peaceful and we want to be um, like diplomatic. And, you know, there's really no need. And, you know, and coming to the whole ideas um, of what Liberland Land stands for, we're more of like kind of like a minarchist, you know, kind of like a, a libertarian type, 
idea of a nation. We don't want a big, you know, like overarching government anyways. And so it's like, well, you know, like we're not gonna have a standing military and, you know, and the government should have that, you know, shouldn't have that power to begin with. So, uh, you know, and that's where, where we currently stand. You know, of course that can always change, but, you know, in the name um, of like Bitcoin and stuff like that, we, you know, we want a peaceful like transition from, you know, like that jurisdiction to be, you know, kind of like unclaimed to like legal jurisdiction. We want it to be legal. Gotcha. And that's a complicated process. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure it is. Uh, I want to step backwards here to talk Please. about how you first got into crypto and secondly, how you found yourself involved in Liberland. What is your position again? So I am the deputy head of mission to the U.S. for okay. the Free Republic of Liberland. So what that means is that I'm kind of like second in command of all of our operations happening here in the U.S. So it's okay. like we'll have like state representatives or we'll have like representatives like on the city level. I don't think we have like a Detroit like representative, um, you know, like nudge, nudge. But, uh, yeah, you, know, right. <laughs> you know, like we'll kind of manage you know, their efforts. And, you know, so like, let's say we might have um, a representative out in, in Utah and they might contact their senator or their congressman to try to, you know, push like some like lobbying effort, you know, for like the U.S. to recognize the land. Obviously, this is a huge effort. So essentially what we're trying to do is, you know, basically like um, a lobbying effort, you know, you know, as well as helping out like with the land as much as possible. I did the country see- is... I saw yeah, that it was interesting. You guys have two vice presidents. Explain that to me. Right, right, right. So we have one vice president that is based in the U.S. and one vice president that's based um, in Europe as well. Okay. So, right. So since like kind of like our two biggest teams is based in Europe and based in the U.S., it kind of just made sense for us. And I mean, like, if you're starting, um, you know, like a new government, you can basically do like whatever you want. <laughs> you know, so, um, but it just made sense for us, you know, so we have one handling operations uh, in Europe and one handling uh, um, like operations in the U.S. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself um, and, and how your background, how you got into crypto. I'm always interested to hear that from first time uh, guests. Okay, so I, um, um, I discovered Bitcoin back in 2015. And um, through like through like this radio talk, some station called Free Talk Live. Um, right. I don't know if you've heard of them before. No, I um, they're based out of like New Hampshire. I think they have like a hundred plus like stations, or maybe like hundred sixty. I haven't listened to them in a few years, but um, you know they would talk about uh, you know like ideas of like liberty and uh, and the Constitution, and of course like Bitcoin. And so I was kind of like working like a dead end job. You know, back in 2015, um, and so I was just like always listening to them talk about Bitcoin, talk about Bitcoin, talk about Bitcoin. This is back when Bitcoin was like, you know, 200 bucks. You know, wish I bought then, didn't. You know, and I studied it for a whole year. And then I was like, boom. You know, like this is it. And I kind of went down that path. And then um, I eventually started to work for um, a Bitcoin ATM company based um, kind of like in the Mid Atlantic area, and. And then um, in 2017, I, um, I took a flight down to Akipoko for, you know, uh, I'm like Jeff Berwick's like Anarchopoko. And I wanted to go there, not because I was kind of like a fan of, you know, everything that Jeff was talking about, but because uh, the president of Lieberland was speaking and, you know, up from like 2015 to it, it was founded up to up to then, I was just like researching as much information as possible, you know, like in different languages. Mm-hmm. you know and like you know like niche um you know, like information trying to stay up to date and i was like i need to get myself involved with this and um so i'll tell you a funny story of actually how i got involved i think i maybe talked you know, like the story of me like maybe like on one other podcast but um but i was hanging out with like the free talk live people at that time and um and i saw that they had a liberland passport there and i opened it up and it had um ron paul's name on the picture mm. Ron Paul and all this personal information and so and I was like oh this is crazy so you know I'm sure a lot of people have heard of Ron Paul and stuff like that uh, you know he is um, an American politician um, you know very much on the libertarian side um, of things and just you know just a great person in general and 
So when the president um, of Lieberland was going to speak, he was going to basically give Ron Paul like honorary on the citizenship like for Lieberland and hand him um, his Lieberland passport. So um, I was able to get my hands on the passport and I got excited and I took a picture of the passport. So I was like, this is really, really cool. And then, um, and then I guess like the Lieberland delegation at that time found out that I took a picture of the passport and then they pulled me aside and said, Hey, can, you know, can you, <laughs> you know, can you get rid of this picture and stuff like that? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah of course. You know, and then by the way, my name is Jerry Langbrunner. And then, you know, like I've been, I'm like writing history with them, like ever since. Like, that was like a nice. funny, embarrassing story, but I was like, you know, you know, like if you have um, a passport of a new country that you've been obsessed with, and it, you know, you know, and it has, um, you know, like Ron Paul's name in it, you know, like you got to. <laughs> no, so, anyways, good. anyways, so like that got me, um, you know, involved with them, and um, I became the Ohio representative at that time because I was in Ohio, and then um, I became the deputy head of mission, kind of like I was working myself up the levels, and so I've been working for the country for almost about four years now. Oh, that's that's awesome, man. That is awesome. So I see you guys have about 500,000 citizens that are requesting to become right. part of Lieberland. Uh, what's the bottleneck? Is it, is it just like paperwork? Like what is what makes it exactly. such a tedious? Exactly. So, you know, to be honest, um, we've received, I think, I think it's actually over 600,000 applications wow. now. Um, you know, if you think about it, let's say... A little country like Monaco, okay, mm -hmm. has about thirty-three thousand citizens. Okay, um, Lieberland's about two and a half times the size of Monaco. So, how many citizens can we honestly have? Right. Nowhere, nowhere near five hundred thousand. Right. And also, we're we're more or less working on um, a lot of other things other than processing applications now. So, I know a lot of people have got upset and stuff like that. You, you, you know, and, it and makes you yourself. Sense. Like you said. Right, right, right. And also, like, you know, the people, like, haven't really heard from us and stuff like that. And it's more or less, you know, like, we've been kind of keeping, like, our nose, like, down to, like, to, like the grindstone. And, you know, like, we've just been working, uh, you know, and a lot of stuff we do, especially on the diplomatic level, we really can't talk about. We really can't mm -hmm. speak about, uh, you know, because if we talk about it, you know, then it could be kind of like a political nightmare for us, right. uh, stuff like that. So it's more of a situation as, you know, like, we're just keeping ourselves busy. Um, you know, and just really just building and when we're ready to go live, you know, especially when we're ready to push a blockchain, um, live, you know, which we can talk about that. Um, yeah, let's talk about that because right. I, I saw you take a picture with the infamous, the great Dan Lammer last year. <laughs> and, uh, if you can talk about his involvement with Liberland and so, and, yeah, and, so and Dan really, is... I yeah, really so want to see not if he's involved. not he's not okay. He's not involved, yeah. But you know, I would love to see the Eden project become implemented within the Liberland governmental in infrastructure. That would be great because I like how that process of voting for. I don't know if you you're familiar with the whole Eden project, but that would be a great. little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit. I have to be honest, I have not looked too much into the Eden project. Um, unfortunately, I know it's kind of more um, was like it came out like a few months ago. Um, I know Dan was you know talking about it then, and you guys are working on it. But um, I must apologize; I have not been looking into like the Eden project much. So, what right. are you building uh, exactly? How are you implementing blockchain with Polkadot and 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 the state and the the, the country? What are you guys doing? Right, right. So, it, you know, so like a lot in. Uh, you know, like EOS and Polkadot and other like these like DDPOS or sort of like delegated proof of stake like systems, you know, um, you're going to be voting mm. um, not essentially for a block producer, but for a member of Congress. OK, gotcha. so I don't know how many members of Congress can have, but, you know, like EOS had like EOS has like 21 block producers 21. kind of like in, in the top level, you know, and, you know, these block producers will do, you know, certain things to help the EOS blockchain and if they're doing a good job and not you know, being stupid and you know like they keep up the network and stuff like that you know like there's politics involved with that of course mm -hmm. um you know then they'll be voted in um you know in the top 21 and then they'll get paid out a certain like inflation rate 
Um, so our token will be called the Lieberland of Merit. And so essentially, if you're a member of Congress, um, as much as I know about now, you know, of course, we're like we're not launched and, you know, I'm in meetings all the time, so I can't say certain things and I can't say certain, certain things. But, you know, like these like members of Congress will get paid out and stuff like that. And so like you use like your legal and merit to essentially make a vote mm. um, and stuff like that. So, you know, if we're going to have a situation where, like, um, you know, one Liberland, one Liberland merit is one vote, you know, exactly how that's going to be. If you want to use, um, you know, like, or if you want to um, be involved with um, our governance process, then you essentially need to apply to be a citizen, okay? okay. And also, you need to um, stake 5,000 merits. So as of right now, um, we are essentially pegging one merit to one U.S. dollar. So essentially, if you want to become a citizen, it's about five thousand U.S. dollars, which is pretty affordable, like for um, a citizenship. And where we are at, uh, you know, currently, um, and so then once you stake these five thousand merits, you know, then you can start voting and stuff like that. And then, of course, if you have ten thousand merits, twenty thousand merits, you know, then your vote will be a little bit more because that's essentially, um, you know, like our version of you paying taxes right. per se. So like taxes will be voluntarily. And so like, if you want to pay more taxes, then you have more at stake, then you have more incentive, you know, to push the country, um, you know, in the right way. Mm -hmm. This is kind of very like a high level of, you know, where we're going to go. And as well, you know, we're going to have, um, you know, let's say like vehicle registration on the blockchain, land registration, uh, you know, like company registration, we're going to have like a whole like justice system that is going to be kind of like one of our main products so like so let's say it's, it's interesting you bring up taxes right and they're voluntarily accepted or collected if people don't do that then how are the public services paid for who puts the bill where's the short the shortfall how is that covered and who covers that you right know, have you guys thought about that yet or is that sure. something that okay right so it really comes down to like market demand and you know as any like governance system, you know, has, so, you know, like when it comes to, um, I'm sure like some of your, I'm um, like followers are familiar with like, with like Dash, all right, you know, like in how it's kind of like their governance program, you know, comes out. If they want to put up a proposal to get something funded, you know, like they would like lock in like free Dash, um, I believe. And then, you know, and say like, hey, I need this much Dash to get this going, you know, and then if boom, if they get like a hundred Dash, you know, to fund like, let's say like a bridge, you know, like over the Danube River into like Liberland territory to like connect, you know, Serbia to Liberland, like proper, you know. So it really comes up to uh, how the free market, you know, wants to use our governance to get that funded. So, you know, it really comes to like what the demand is there because like us as a government, we don't want to be overarching. So it's not like, hey, we're going to build a bridge here. It's like, well, is there really a market demand for that or not? You know, us as a government, you know, we don't, we don't know, but if our citizens say, yes, we would like that. And, you know, and if it's really um, a demand, then, you know, like they'll post the bill. And it's really, it's really like that simple. It's like when it comes to like government services, it's going to be funded, you know, kind of finally, I'm like the free market in a way, you know, and exactly how that's going to play out. I don't know, because, you know, like when it comes to, um, you know, like even like the American system, you know, when um, our founders wrote the constitution, it was an experiment, right, TV? And so when it comes to us, this is really just going to be an experiment. But, you know, we can see, you know, like how Dash, you know, worked out, how EOS worked out, how Polkadot worked out and see what like the best solution is. No, that makes sense, man. I think um, that's, it's going to be interesting how that all turns out, man. It's an experiment, like you said, and yeah um you'll have to you'll hit walls and you have to pivot and and iterate and but i think in the long run this is a great blueprint and a watershed moment for the world you know right and so kind of like a thing that i always have um is that liberland is going to be the 21st century model on how a state should operate mm -hmm. okay so it's like all these governments are you know still acting like it's like the 1900s you know yeah yeah, and you know Estonia was the closest thing to that prior to. I don't know if Estonia came before Liberland or not Estonia, but I know Estonia did. But I'm saying their their 
pivot to be more blockchain focused and have right, their own, right. they tried to have their own token and all that but because they were in the EU you know that got shot down quickly right so in the purpose of Estonia it's very interesting so, what made Estonia very very popular is their e-residency program right. I'm not sure if you're familiar with yeah yeah for so sure. um I just so um, I decided to get an e-residency card for fun you know like I don't use it but it was only like like a hundred euro yeah. yeah it was for fun and we got to go to like the Estonian like embassy and you know, like we took their you know like they took like our fingerprints and stuff like that so what was interesting is from like Liberland side we thought the e-residency card was a really cool idea and so we took that idea from Estonia you know because like you know if some other nation or you know is doing a good idea and we like it or we can possibly make it better um you know like we're gonna do that so we have the so we have on um, the Liberland e-residency card and kind of think of it as you know, it's not quite, you know, on the level of being a citizen, but you still get some services with an e-residency card. And um, what you can get with, with a Liberland e-residency card, I believe it's like $100. And of course, you have to go through like KYC and put an application, et cetera, et cetera. But what you can do with that is you will become an e-resident. Um, of Liberland, and so that means if you wanted to like register a company or if you wanted to like use some of our services, mm -hmm. then you would be able to do that. So if you wanted to set up a company in the in like the Liberland jurisdiction, you know, for like whatever reason, you know, like, if it made sense for your company, then um, a requirement uh, would be to become a Liberland e resident. Yeah, my my business partner and our and my tech startup a few years ago went out went out and did that, and he went to I think Washington D.C. And right to do the registration or whatever so yeah, that's pretty neat man well how can people get more involved i mean we know we can't at this point become a citizen because of priority uh of things with you guys and folks it is in possible here. to come kind of, so you touch on two you know two points there um the best way to become a citizen is to get involved so what i mean by that is you know about four years ago i wanted to become a citizen i wanted to get involved with liberland i wanted to help build it mm -hmm. and you know, after, I forget exactly how long, but after like a year and a half of, you know, like flying to different places, you know, like talking to like different congressmen and stuff like that and doing different meetings, helping out, um, eventually, you know, the president gave me like my papers and stuff like that. So like I worked towards it, gotcha. you know, the bit, so like if you want to become a citizen, you know, you really have to kind of like play your part, you know, so like same thing as you know, like you're starting like a new company. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you want to be involved with that company or let's say you want to get like early access to um, like their products or something like that, you know, you want to get to know, you know, like the CEO and the founders and the people involved and stuff like that. So it, so if any of your listeners want to get involved, what they, you know, of course, what they should do is go to LibreLand.org um, and apply and go through that application. So we have your information on file, but what you can do is that you can contact me at usa at gov g o v dot l l dot l a n d dot land so usa at gov dot l l dot land and i'm sure we can put this in the link if you're interested um, in working with on um, the government then what i would say is that you can email me liberland wants to be the most transparent government as possible so you know like here's like my government email it comes straight to my mailbox i don't have a secretary touch it you know it goes straight to me there's no filter uh, if you're really, really interested in helping us out, you know, send me on like your resume or your LinkedIn or CV or something like that. And, you know, tell me in a paragraph or two what, what you can offer us, right. you know, what you can offer as your services. So it's like, hey, I'm from, um, I don't know, like New York City and I know the mayor of New York City and this can help you out because of this or something like that. Cool you know let's try something you know we're especially here in the u.s we're looking for a lot of like political you know like connections and stuff like that uh you know you know sometimes we might need help with i'm like let's say like blockchain and or like it stuff you know this is you know kind of your skills um you know you know kind of just like tell us how you know you want to be involved and the cool thing is when you're trying to start a country there's a million things you have to do so kind of giving 
you know, so to kind of give you an example, um, well, one thing I worked on a little bit is kind of like our soccer team. So like, especially if you're a country in Europe, you know, you got to have a soccer team, you know, it's just like you have to. And so, you, you know, so like, let's say if you're like a soccer coach or you're a player, you know, maybe like you played in like the USL or like MLS and stuff like that. And you want to, you know, form a soccer team. So like, I'm originally from like Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, like there was a situation where uh, we had a guy who wanted to start like a local team um, in Cincinnati and try to get like, you know, kind of, you know, kind of like a Lieberland like national team, you know, like in the States and, you know, just like work up our image. But it unfortunately didn't work out. But, you know, like there's just like all these options, you know, like start a hockey team, you know, we're trying to start like an Olympic team. Um, I believe we had like a few people on our chess team. Um, you know, like there's infinite things you can do, you know, for a country. And so, you know, when people always like message us and say like, oh, hey, I applied three years ago, like, where's my citizenship? You know, it's like sometimes what I'll respond is, you know, it's not what Lieberland can do for you, but it's, you know, but what can you, you know, but what can you do for Lieberland? Right, and so like, if right. you're gonna be, right, so like if you want to become a citizen, these are things that you need to do. You know, and yeah, you can no, contact me directly I, and I can I, put you in, I agree with that, you know, in the right sure. way. And I'll tell you like, hey, is this a need or not? Or it's like, hey, that's an interesting idea because people come to us, you know, for like the strangest things, you know. So I'll kind of give you an example. Um, a few years ago, um, a guy wanted to get involved and he was um, a podcaster. All right. You know, you know, just like you, he was a professional podcaster, you know, had a great like radio voice and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, he said, hey, I want to start um like the official like Lieberland on like podcast so if you go to like YouTube and type in the Lieberland show you know you'll find um this guy his name you know his name is um Adam Carswell he's originally uh up from Cleveland Ohio and this was like huge like success story at you know for him you know because he became like the podcaster like for Lieberland and he started his own show called like the Lieberland show or another example, we have this guy in Poland and he wanted to start, you know, like Lieberland TV. So if you, you know, go to YouTube or wherever and type in like Lieberland TV and he, you know, and he, you know, it's basically like our version of like BBS or like RT or like CNN or something like that, you know, and it's kind of just, it's like homegrown, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not like central top authority, kind of like decentralized mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like if you want to start doing something, you know, let me know and i'll tell you hey that's a good idea or, hey talk to this person they're doing it or hey we're not doing that we haven't thought about it go do it you know you know like if you're trying to push you know like the u.s in some sort of way um you know you know you may not exactly need the permission you know like depending on your you know what we're doing um but you know like you just do it and you know of course you need you know kind of like my okay or, or or like the president's okay and you can work with us and stuff like that but yeah we're we're pretty open to deal with uh you know but i would say just go to libreland.org um fill out the application and then just email me you know your resume um, your skills and you know tell me a few paragraphs of what you're interested in doing you know yeah that's, that's awesome man yeah guys definitely do that you gotta put in the work to become a citizen is actually that's how it should be you know, everyone shouldn't just be able to become a citizen of Lieberland, especially as it being such a small area. Uh, you have to be very selective on the people that you uh, let in. So definitely get over to Lieberland.org for more information on that. It's been a pleasure, Joey. I appreciate you coming on. And these are some pictures they took uh, when they were in Detroit here. <laughs> that is the facings and Eels Detroit team having great fun at feather what is it called feather bowling right it was that feather was, bowling yeah that was, yeah, interesting. That was, that was the first time yeah that was, very was a lot of fun in the comment section below let me know your thoughts on Lieberland. did you forget about it are you are you interested if so definitely email joey and he can get you more information on how to become more involved and possibly become a citizen so that's it for today's kicking the session thanks for joining me joey 
make sure you guys like share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more videos like this we're out of here people ha! if you want to see more videos and interviews like this from influential people in tech finance and sports subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell to be alerted and go a step further and join the youtube and membership area for early releases of videos like this i'm out of here ha!